And uh, we have uh, one announcement that you may or may not know. It hadn't been in the papers yet that Silver Wings Field, the airport at Eureka Springs, is open. After a five-and-a-half-year legal battle, we have been victorious. It is open. We have restrictions that we can live with, but Eureka has an airport, which you will find, as I have always said, is worth millions of this town. Now, in regard to the uh, uh, auditorium, uh, Joanne maybe forgot what she told me, but uh, being old as I am, I still have an excellent memory. And the way the thing went down, if you notice in my article, I did not mention anything about money. That was not mentioned at all. Joanne did tell me that I would have to talk. Well, let me go back. She said the uh, CAPC was going to run it until the end of the year, but they hadn't decided what they were going to do, if the city was going to take the audit over or not. So she said, call the mayor, talk to him, and uh, <clears throat> see about city council. That was exactly what happened. As far as any money mentioned, Jim uh, Williams, when we first went in some, perhaps three months ago, said, well, maybe we can get you some money through, I didn't know what, through Arts Council or something. That was the only mention of money. We never asked for money. It was not the point. We'll come up with the money. But we need the auditorium working in this town. It needs to be bringing people in, and we're proposing a four-show a week which is three evening shows and one matinee on Sunday. And this is all season long. And we have the personnel to handle this. We have the expertise. We've been in theater quite some time, over many years, from Houston back up to here. And it uh, just behooves all of us to work together. And that just seems to be the hardest thing here. I don't understand that. Why is everybody, I don't want to work with you? you know, it doesn't matter if you like me or not. What's that got to do with it? I'm trying to bring good things into this town. And, you know, we don't make any money on this. We spend a lot. We lose a lot. But we haven't made a dime on anything. So that is not our objective. This is a neat town, and it needs everyone working together, cooperate and graduate, as we used to say in pilot training. And we need a committee of some kind so someone will make some decisions. I mean, we're just held here hostage, so to speak, because no one wants to get together and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Now, it's lead, follow, or get out of the way. I mean, something has to be done. So please, let's get on the ball and get this thing rolling. So we can't do it this year. It's too late. But next year, we can get it going. That must be the timer that yes. the turkey is done. The turkey is done. <laughs> Stick it for Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you, Errol. Please state your name. I am Beth Severe. Same name as his. <laughs> and, you know, this play that uh, I have written, uh, it's a musical play, and it definitely would be, it would rival the type of plays that you see in Branson. It is something this town needs. And it is a, it, it's a great play, it really is. And uh, we're just wanting you to get together to dis make decisions so that we can move forward. Because we're held up. We've been held up for several months, passed from one place to another place and and we just want to get decisions made so we can move forward we have a fellow in california who's waiting on us he's uh, been in uh, he's been teaching drama for years in california and he want, he's willing to move here to work on this play to be direct this play and uh, we have some music that we're going to work on and we're that fellow's waiting for us to get the go-ahead on that. And we want to ask all of you if there's anyone that you know that's interested in theater that would be a help to us. We need an angel to help get the funds going. Yes, we need help with that. But we just mainly need your support and your interest and any anything that you have to offer to suggestions. We'd appreciate it very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Uh, next is Becky Gillette. I think we're going to cord Okay. Is it cord that, that tight? No. Even if they're short. Okay. I can pick it up. You can? Okay. <coughs> Hi, Becky. Um, I'm here in support of my neighbor, Nellie. Uh, I went through this with her. Uh, she called. I've got sewage all over my house, and uh, 
believe me, you don't even want to look at the pictures because it'll make you so upset. And the thing that upsets me even worse is I feel like this, the city has not done right by Nellie since this happened. She was initially told that she would be taken care of. Other people that have had this happen to them in the town have had it taken care of. Uh, fortunately, she did have homeowner's insurance because the damages were close to ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. She just wanted her deductible, which was hard for her to come up with, and the city said no. But the thing is... That, and now they're saying that they told her she should have a, a sewage backflow preventer valve. She never even heard of that before. My suggestion is that Public Works put things in writing like that. If there is a situation where they know they've got a problem and a, and a line is not draining right, first of all, they need to find the money to fix it. That's number one. You can still smell this stink in our neighborhood. All you have to do is walk down Cliff Street. It needs to be taken care of. She can't sell her home. She can't leave now because she has a known problem there and needs to be fixed. I was told, though, that a backflow preventer device will not necessarily be fail-safe. And when they put that much pressure in there, it can blow out the backflow preventer. So it's really important that this be fixed and that when we have somebody who's a resident of this town and something bad happens to them at the hands of the city, that the city steps forward to do the right thing. They didn't even stop to help her clean up the mess in the bathroom. She's in there with a shop vac cleaning things up. She's at tearing out carpet by herself in the middle of the winter when we've got an ice storm because the cleanup contractors could not get there. So I'm asking that you please put this on the agenda. Talk to Public Works. What can be done for Nellie? The most important thing is to fix that sewage line because we don't want sewage all up and down that street every time this happens, and Nellie doesn't need it in her house. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you, ma'am. All right, looks like we've had two crossed off. The next one on the list is Mr. Chris Bauer. Chris Bauer. No, Chris Bauer. Okay, Bo, you're up next. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I actually brought some handouts, which I'm going to give you in just a moment, but it pertains to the sidewalk ordinance, which is at the end of your um, uh, agenda this evening. But I'll hand these out so you'll have them during the rest of your meeting. Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, could, can we suspend the rules and have Mr. Satori as part of the discussion on item seven on the discussion of the sidewalk ordinance well he's, he's still got his three minutes here so okay well in my three minutes i just wanted to uh to uh sort of uh, back up the capc's decision to uh form a committee to explore their their rapport with the auditorium and with that i wanted to add that uh i, I just they just passed at their recent meeting their actual expenditures for 2010 and under auditorium they had one hundred forty four thousand dollars as an expense and out of that 144000 97000 was for, like, three or four employees that were down there. And then when you look at the other 40000 you start seeing how much of it was materials and supplies and that sort of thing. And then utilities was much less than I had ever estimated it to be. And so uh, I think once in a committee and a good conversation when people realized that the auditorium was built in 1928 to promote tourism, period, and that we need a commission that has the cash flow to do it. They could, they, could, they could take care of the auditorium. It's already been restored and still have over a million dollars left to do everything else. And so I think that that's going to work itself out real well because the, the CAPC is the commission to do it. It's just the past CAPC and the director of the last uh, few years was just unwilling to work. And that's why they had a lot of people spending money down there and nothing being done. If you remember 10 years ago, we were having a headliner show at least once a month, and we were having events, a lot of community events, uh, once a week. And so when you have things going all the time and when you have employees working in there who are also responsible for all the special events in the town and also the graphics and also the promotion of the city, then everybody feels a lot better about what's being spent. But a lot of people think they're spending you know, all this horrible amount of money down there when they're not. And, uh, but uh, once that information gets out, and I think a lot of people will change their attitude, and it will spare you the, uh, 
the uh, the grief of having to consider it because it really needs you have a commission with a revenue stream to take care of it. Uh, I'm going to hand these out just so that you can peruse them uh, between now and the end of your meeting, and uh, and then I'll come back uh, at your will and explain it. So thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Thank you. That is the last of the public comments. Public comments. Okay. <coughs> All right. Next on the agenda is unfinished business. Uh, number one is discussion of proposal to establish auditorium commission, which was tabled from last council meeting. Motion to discuss. Mr. DeVille. Uh, owing to the comments by the CAPC director and the intent of the CAPC to manage the auditorium through the rest of the year, forming a committee, I will at this time withdraw my proposal to establish an auditorium commission. Okay. You make that a motion? I made that a motion if I can get right. a second. Second. Motion made and seconded to withdraw his, uh, his, comments, uh, his proposal to establish a commission. Any discussion on this? None? All right. We'll go for it. All in favor of, say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. It's withdrawn. Thank you, sir. But I'll be back. <laughs> All right. Second on unfinished business is the discussion of Resolution 484 and Ordinance 1940, uh, fee schedule for planning commissions in Boza. Mr. Pownell was the sponsor. Enter a chain of motion to discuss. I move we discuss Resolution 484, Ordinance 1940, fee scheduling. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? I know. Well, I had recommend this go back to the Planning Commission, and I guess it was very abruptly, reminds me of the old days, very abruptly sent back to Council because they didn't understand what, uh, what they were supposed to do. And there were a couple other challenges, I guess, to what I had said. Uh, so I would like to point out a couple things in the resolution 484. Uh, it refers to section 114-13, which no longer exists in the city code. You need to realize that those four fees were adopted under the former mayor Satori back 10 years ago and increased cost uh, of the building official and the times that they have to go out, I, be I believe that really needs to be taken into consideration, as well as under Ordinance 1940, those fees that are included referencing different uh, sections of the <coughs> municipal code. Um, I, I still think that it needs to go to the Planning Commission because the original resolution 10 years ago came from the Planning Commission. Um, the other thing that they apparently did not understand was the code requirement, and I will go back to uh, several years ago uh, when the Honorable Judge Ohms stood in front of this body that sat here at the time and said the